not just gonna come through, you know, we get to the we get the time, five o'clock, which I say, you know, it's gonna come through resilience, hard work, doing what other people are not willing to do, what other companies are willing are not willing to do. Yeah, the first thing is never be too big, no matter how big you are or how well established you think. It's the big companies that are always nimble. They're always serving the customers on time. We've we we always think of ourselves as a startup. Um, no matter how many clients we've had. And over the years, we've had, you know, um, tens of thousands of clients. In, in SA, as a, as a young black guy, it's it's tough. It's it's something that we don't see because in Botswana, we are all young black guys. By that side, you know, there are so many odds against you. Already when you start, you know, there's a lot to prove. Well, I don't consider myself much of an A student. I think I'm just a hard worker. I know for me to catch concepts, I need to spend a little bit more time. I, I'm the I'm the Cristiano Ronaldo. <laughs> <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome to the show today, the MD of Lion Tutoring, Mr. Tobo Khatola. Ah, thank you, Mpo. How are you thank doing, you, man? Thank you, guys. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Finally. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Deep Dive Sessions. My name is Mpo Mpo. Thank you for stopping by. Today, we have a special guest by the name Tobo Khatola of Lion Tutoring, a young entrepreneur who started his business in 2015 and three years in a row won the best youth-owned business in Botswana and has employed to date close to 330 employees. A young man that is doing so much regionally and internationally. And we're going to be talking about how to fix the education system in Botswana. Yeah. Finally, I've thought about this many times. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that man I want on the show. I think actually it's, it's when you it's when you're on the Forbes cover. Um, because 2020 is actually it was also when we started Deep Dive. Um, we started in March. Yeah, then our episodes were on Facebook by then. And I saw I saw you get on the cover. I was like, one day is one day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and today is the day, man. Finally, it's about three years now. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm very, very, very happy to have you on the show. Ah, let's start here, man. Talk to us about Lion Tutoring. Obviously, you guys started in 2015. You have built it to something amazing. You now have an app, mm. Uber for Tutors. I mean, there's just so much going on. Where, where did the ideas stem from? Mm. Did it come from when you went to school in, in SA or where? Yeah. Yeah, thank you for having me on the show. And, man, you're doing a great job. You know, this is such a nice platform. Yes. Keep it up. Keep thank it you. up. Yeah. yeah. So with Lion Tutoring, um, it started in 2015. Um, so I, I I started schooling in South Africa, like you said, in 2011. And on my second year of school, um, I saw the need to be a tutor at my university. Mm. So I was recruited by both the university and a tutoring company. Mm -hmm. um, really, this was just to make an extra buck, you know, once yeah. you're studying, once you're living in a different country and um, the parents are paying for school fees, the least I could do was to get a job and try to also make a little bit of income. Yeah. And I saw that I'm actually quite good at this tutoring thing because my students were doing quite well. I was passionate. It's not, it wasn't as if I was going to to work, even though I was working even more hours than mm -hmm. I was spending in class as a student. So I saw that this is really a passion for me. And um, when I graduated, came back to Botswana, I got employed. I tried to look for jobs and there were no jobs. So for, for me, entrepreneurship is something I, I could say I really stumbled on um, because it wasn't really my first option. My first option was to get a job mm. and there were no jobs. Um, but with the, with the grace of God, I was able to stumble into something that I'm actually very good at. Mm. And you know, the rest is history. Nice. Well put, well put. You'd find that a lot of the times, cause obviously when you said you were being wanted by the, the varsity and also like another private company, <clears throat> It's probably because you're doing well in school mm. and you have explained also in previous interviews that, you know, you passed with flying colors mm. and, and, and you went on to study there. But you'll find what people that are very good, like A students are not great at mm. um, explaining concepts. Yeah. You'll find that probably it's like those that are, that have to struggle a little bit to get to the concepts and understand them and internalize them are good at explaining them. Mm. So talk to me about that. Like, what is, what is that that you figured out in terms of in terms of making somebody understand a concept or just 
breaking something down to a student yeah. to, to ensure that they are able to understand? Well, I don't consider myself much of an A student. I think I'm just a hard worker. Mm. Even today at our business, you know, I, I put in hard work because I know for me to catch concepts, I need to spend a little bit more time. Mm. So people might think I, I'm the I'm the Cristiano Ronaldo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you right. know, I'm not the Lionel Messi. Right. You know, I have to right. work harder. I have to, I remember once when I was um, in Form 2, I was studying the heart. We had a test coming on the heart, you know, the flow of, mm. of blood in the heart, you know, how it comes from the iota, problems, you know. The vena cava, I'm the like, vena yeah. cava, the <laughs> iota, all of yeah. that, bicuspid valves and all of that. You know, for other students, they, they could be able to catch that movement in class. But I was the kind of student who had asked questions in class and still don't get it. But I have to go home and spend the whole weekend, three textbooks, you know, mm. trying to understand, you know. So I think basically I'm, I'm that kind of student. I'm not an A, A, A grade student, mm -hmm. but I did. I did actually um, pass with flying cars. I got 48 points. Yeah. I skipped a grade um, from four. Then I, I was um, uh, recruited for actuarial science. So I went to study actuarial science at the UP. Nice. So, I think um, communication, I've always also been big on communication. I try to express myself, uh, and, you know, get my thoughts in. And I think what makes it easy with me is um, I, I know how to take big terms and, you know, big concepts and just explain them to your day-to-day, -day, your, your average Joe, and say, this is how, this is mm -hmm. how it works. You know, it's, it's, that's, it's that simple, mm -hmm. you know. That's why most of the students are actually finding it easier. And I, I recruit other people who are like me, you mm -hmm. know, who, who know how to explain, you know, who know how to express themselves mm -hmm. uh, for students, yeah. Nice. Yeah, that's interesting, actually. I want us to, to come back to that. But you talked about hard work, and I think that's something that, as an entrepreneur, everybody of us has to embody. I mean, it's it's, it's a prerequisite. Mm. If you don't have hard work, you're done. Mm. <laughs> you're done. Mm. And not even mm. in just entrepreneurship, in any sphere of life, you just won't get to that level. Yeah. How were you able to build that work ethic? Yeah, well, the work ethic is, ish, um, especially with business, Mobotswana. Mm. You know, we're only 2 million in the country. Um, you can't afford to do a, sh a shady job. You can't afford to, you know, sleep. You can't afford to not work hard because it's a small community. If one person experiences a bad service from you, they're able to just go on to consume a watchdog <laughs> and that is, the, the, yeah. that is it, you know. It's, it's not like in SA where we are now, where, you know, if you do a bad job, you can always go to the Eastern Cape, mm. you can always go to the Western Cape, you can always go to Mpumalanga and no one would know anything about you. So I think the work ethic is, you know, we, we really want to deliver a grade, a grade service all the time for every client, you know. We don't discriminate to say who's paying what, you know. We make sure what we deliver the best. Mm. Yeah. But as an individual, how do you make that happen? Because you, you, it goes back to even secondary school as you explained it. But you're the guy that put three textbooks there yeah. and pushed. Because um, there's people that don't have. I have students sometimes, they tell mm. me, say, I'm not motivated. Mm. And I'm like, mm. okay. Go and watch David Goggins or yeah. something. <laughs> Give an example. But yeah. um, um, where, how were you able to build it? Because I think it's a special skill that mm. um, once you have it, you really have it. Yeah, I think it builds itself, you know. Mm. Um, I, it's, I'm not a big person on coincidence. I used to play a lot of tennis also growing up. Um, and, you know, let me just give an example. With tennis, it's not like team sports. It's an individual sport. Mm. When you lose, you walk out of that court and everyone is looking at you. So, you know, it, it sort of exposes you mm. um, to, if, if you don't put in you the work, you can't, yeah, you can't blame anybody and you can't hide behind anyone, mm. you know. It's at the end of the day, it's you. We are all looking at you. Right. You have to really produce. So I think even just, you know, those small things, you know, playing tennis, you know, they've really showed me that I have no one to rely on but myself. Mm. No. Lovely. And also, Prada, you hate losing also. <laughs> <laughs> you hate losing, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, man. So talk to me about now business, um, developing this and moving forward with it. You know, um, there's actually, a, 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 I was trying to make research on two tenant companies. There's actually a, quite a number of them mm. around mm. Mobutuan, mm. but there's few that stand out. Mm. You know, the likes of you, the likes of Cricket, the likes of others. Mm. Um, so obviously there's, there's something that you have built mm. that is recognizable. Um, 
what was your plan moving into business and how were you trying to stand out and become um, the company you are today? Yeah, um, it also just comes back from from my schooling at, at SA, you know. Mm. I had a sales job. That's one thing I forgot to mention. Oh, yeah, yeah. I had a sales job and, you know, in, in SA, as a, as a young black guy, it's it's tough, you mm. know. It's it's something that we don't see because in Botswana, we are all young black guys. Yeah. By that side, you know, there are so many odds against you. And if you are working in a company with um, other people, you know, Indians, Indian males, Indian females, Africans, you know, white guys, white males, white females, and, and you are the black guy, you know, already when you start, you know, there's a lot to prove. So you really have to, you really have to push. Mm. You really have to push harder than everyone else. Um, you really have to stand out mm. because if you, if you just sort of sit back and relax, other people would be able to tick boxes that you can't tick with a customer. If you invite a customer for coffee and you are the young black guy, already there's that, uh, does he really know what he's going to be talking about? But if you are maybe of another demographic, people sort of take that easier. They accept what you're going to say, but you have to work really hard and you really have to stand out. Big markets, you know, and with Lion Tutoring, what we're trying to do is, is something that surpasses just Botswana. Mm-hmm. We're trying to get into the, into the South African market. We're do, we've done well in Joburg and Pretoria. We're trying to get into Cape Town market next year. We're trying to get to London market. We're trying to get to New York. You know, Australia you're not, you're not just going to be an average Joe and try to make it. And you'd find in those countries, they've had tutoring companies or whatever that is yeah. that, that is that we're doing. They've got people who've been doing it for years. Mm. They've got millions, if not billions, in their balance sheets. They they have the resources mm. to to get them there. So it's not just gonna come through, you know, we get Lilehela, look at the time, five o'clock of which I say, you know, it's gonna come through resilience, hard mm. work, doing what other people are not willing to do, what other companies are willing are not willing to do. Mm. You know. Uh, I, I always tell people I, I'm not shy to now take out the suit and go stand in the robot distribute flyers, you know, as I'm not shy, you know, Mm. I I have nothing. If it's going to do the job, if it's going to get my team of sales guys, you know, excited and motivated to do the work, so be it. So let's go do it together. So let's get people excited, you know. Mm. So we really have to stand out, you know, you have to do what other people are are not willing to do. I love that. I love that. Um, I also like the way, um, you know, the SA experience you gave us. So starting the company, did you get funding? Were you bootstrapping uh, with, the, with your savings? How were you able to start this company? And funding in Botswana? Where am I <laughs> hey, Tell us. <laughs> tell us so we can go there and, and yeah. get the funding. You know, in Botswana, man, unfortunately, um, it's, it's not as easy. You have to bootstrap. You have to really bootstrap. I bootstrapped. I started taking to, uh, students, tutoring students myself. Uh, with the experience that I had, use that money to do other things, mm. um, to hire other people and just grow that, you know, reiterate that process as many times as possible. So by the time people want to now start backing you, you probably even don't even need the money, mm. you know. And I think that's a philosophy that even the I, I had yeah. somebody say, yeah. you know, banks give money to people that don't need the money, yeah. you know. So by the moment you go there to the bank and you s- somewhat seem desperate, you want to, I want to start my business, you know, they're not going to bank, they're, yeah. not, they're not going to fund you. They're not going to, and banks don't do funding, mm. you know. They look at collateral. Yeah. If, if, you are un, if you're not privileged to have um, a house somewhere that the bank can use as, as collateral, which many of us don't, you know, you really have to look for where can you get the money. Mm. And it seems also even the way you moved through your, your tutoring, because others I know go the franchising route, others go right. When I, you, you built the app and you wanted to be kind of like the hub, if, I, if, I'm, if I'm correct, mm. what was the plan behind it? Yeah, mm. it's Uber for tutors. Mm. Um, the same Uber model, um, you log into an app, you tell it the subject, it picks your location, mm. um, it will suggest the tutors in your location then you book the tutor and pay and we send the tutor to you. So we really try to simplify the process, you know, mm, mm, demystify it. Mm. There's nothing so overly complicated. It's not a franchise. Mm. It's just you getting onto a platform to easily get an educator, a tutor. And now we've even, um, you know, uh, extended our service, not to just academic 
learning. You mm. know, we have non-academic learning. If yeah, you want to so learn to speak a guitar, stuff, like, if you want to learn to speak French, okay. if you want to learn to speak a different language. Mm. So we've built uh, a, a great platform here where it will tell us mm -hmm. that uh, there is an Mpo in Lusaka who needs help with maths, but he wasn't able to get a tutor. Mm. And if there are five, 10 people logging into our app or downloading our app, then we know that it's about time we move into that market. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Because <laughs> I was going to ask you the follow-up, why didn't you choose the franchising route? Why didn't um, I? Yeah. yeah well, uh, for us, it doesn't work because um, we really want to standardize things, you know. It's really hard to standardize. I mean, McDonald's, how, <laughs> how would they know that yeah. one of their th millions of franchises um, in Mexico is selling tacos? But you probably made bank. I mean, tacos and Mexicans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, but still, you know, you want to standardize your operations. You don't want somebody to be in a different country doing something that you're not aware of because now the damage control becomes a lot. So mm. we really standardize. We, we train our, our tutors. Right now, we're actually a finalist in uh, one of the finalists at um, the Botswana Employment Awards. You know, we're putting a lot into our human capital, um, our trainings, you know, our tutors, accountants, HR officers, um, salespeople. We, we really try to make sure that we standardize and have everyone do the same thing. We've got guys in South Africa. And if you get a lion tutor in, in Joburg and a lion tutor in Pakalani, you'll think it's the same person, you know, mm -hmm. it's the same set of rules. It's, the, How it's do you so standardized. Keep that quality assurance. Yeah, we have a ratings really good, and stuff. We have a really good team, our HR team, you know, they're working really good to make sure that we we capacitate the guys, we tell them the rules, we don't tolerate anything which is outside the rules. So it's really easy for us to, you know. Um, get the same standardized service uh, anywhere you are in the world. Nice. Talk to me about that expansion to SA and also the, 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 the variances in the marketplaces of Botswana and SA. Um, what made you move to SA and how was that execution? Because I, I, I believe that, you know, we all want to move. <laughs> we all want to go originally. Yeah. I mean, theoretically it looks great, but then the execution is the game. Mm. How were you able to do that? Well, and what, um, was, what prompted that move? Yeah, well, hard work works. You know, you, you really have to work hard. Um, I, I went into, okay, I studied in South Africa in Pretoria, but when I got to Joburg, it's a different game. Mm. Um, you have to learn the market from scratch. So you'll find that whichever area you get into, you have to, be, you have, to have the mind of a startup. You have to think um, you are the underdog. How are you going to stick out from the game? How are you going to learn what the market is looking like. So you can't just get in and say, seeing that I did this thing, Francis Town, you just cut and paste to mm -hmm. Joburg, you know. That side you are you are fighting with giants. You are, you are fighting with listed education companies. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's any yeah, listed on the, education. On the JSE, on the JSE you mm -hmm. see. Crazy. So that side, you know, you really have to learn, um, you know, learn your business, see the opportunity, work harder than everyone. So there's nothing really, I, I don't want to romanticize this thing. Mm. It's just as simple as that. You get in there. Um, if you don't have a plane ticket, you just drive there or you take an intercape and, and you start to learn. You start so to So you learn, went there, you business. just started going around the marketplace, yeah. months, whatever, yeah. however, how long it took. Yeah. You just did research and did your thing there. And then you do your thing there. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> lovely, lovely. When you were saying that, I was, I was laughing because I remember a statement that Lizibo made. And he doesn't like people that say, hey, work hard. But this expansion, because I want us to go through it and spend a bit of time here because there's a lot of people that are watching this and even here that also want to understand the expansion, mm. moving into a different market. Yeah. Because it's 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 really what puts, what and you getting there mm. is what really ratifies your business yeah. for a year. Yeah. This is something that can go further. Yeah, I was privileged to be also one of the guys in the Mr. VT's Club 100, Fusi Tembekwayo. He has a mentorship program. So I saw that if you get into a market, you have to see who are the players, who are the big people, who are the influencers, mm. um, the guys with the numbers. So I got into this mentorship program. and You he's, applied, hella. Yeah, naturally. I applied and obviously you get called for interviews and all of that. Mm -hmm. Are there any criteria? Yeah, well, you have <laughs> I to, think you, you'd obviously you have, have to meet to a certain amount of... Yeah, you'd have to check his, his yeah, page. Yeah, I, yeah. It changes all the time. and But but the point I'm trying to make is, you know, um, you, you need to really 
attach yourself to people that have done it before mm. in the scale that you want to. And, you know, he's got an amazing team of people that, you know, really help us with the mechanics of the business. You know, mm. your accounting processes, your sales processes, your retention, you know, every single facet of the organization, they've got people that really help you with the nitty gritty. So I think it, it's one of the things that really helped me mm. um, to to get to where I am in the South African market. Nice. Yeah. So that two weeks, now, Chris said you saw him about two weeks back. Yeah. Was that the first time you met him um, at that point? Yeah, Because you were probably level. dealing with people um, before you dealt with him. Yeah, in that level. Uh -huh. I think uh, it was the first time I met him for a one-on-one -on -one where we get to look at the books, we get to look at the numbers, we just break down the, the company mm -hmm. and just to see what is working, what is not, etc. But I've obviously seen him in conferences, like all of us here, mm -hmm. you know, he's come to Botswana quite a number of times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, man. No, it's, 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 it's amazing what you talk about, what, what you say about the South African market and how you're able to get into that. I think that was, that's, that's a great, that's a great way you got into it. So now mm -hmm. expansion into a market like Cape Town, because mm -hmm. the way I would look at it from the outside looking in, Mm. I think Kore, Cape Town is, is literally, it's like you're moving to a different country, yeah. essentially. How are yeah. you thinking about that? Yeah. And what are your learnings from Johannesburg that are going to allow you to be able to stand out in Cape Town? Yeah, well, in, in terms of business expansion, you just have to do it. You have to get, I mean, we used to have Lion Tutoring branches in Francistown and, and Palape, mm. and it wasn't working, you know, and we had to close those down. So I'm not saying, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm the solution to everything, but I'm saying we're going to do it. We have mm. a great team. We've got great team of young people, we've got excellent people, we've got excellent vibes. And little now we have a vision, you know, mm. that we we really want to get this thing global. We want everyone to be able to, the same way everyone thinks of an Uber mm. or, you know, I, I think in Botswana is not that yes, much. Not really. But if you get to other countries, you mm. can't do without an Uber. I was in Dubai the beginning of this year. You can't get anywhere without the, without an Uber. You know, mm. if somebody says, let's meet or at Bolt. Certain, or Bolt mm. or, you know, the other end drive, et cetera, you know. So we're become, we want to become that um, in the market. We want people to be able to say, ah, my child has a maths assignment or has a maths test coming up. Get the line tutoring, you know. So, mm. yeah, it's just steady steps, steady steps. And, you know, the thing is with the expansion, the, the moment you are able to conquer one uh, demographic, it's mm. easier for you to go to conquer to the, next. the next because with that, you have more resources, mm. you know, you've got uh, more uh, brand equity, you know. So, in South yeah. Africa, yeah. there's a time where I was in ENCA and they were um, they were getting a lot of calls. The so, like, when you're on the channel, there's yeah. a earpiece and you're able to, to hear, hear the calls. what, yeah, the calls. You're able to hear, they're able to guide you to say, now there's more people in Cape Town interested to talk about something in Cape Town, you know, you're able to. So I saw that there's a lot of people in Cape Town who are wondering, can we have this service also? So that's nice. that's how it stems, yeah. Nice. Yeah. No, that's beautiful, man. Um, There's a question that I wanted to ask. And it just but you know, we, we didn't even talk about the education system. <laughs> no, we'll talk about it in the second segment because I wanted us to talk about land tutoring here and really just solidify deeply on it. Mm. And so that people and also understand your your thought process even when you come and talk about yeah. the education system. But you have gone up, up against giants. Mm. Eh? Mm. I wanted you to talk, just give us a few tips mm -hmm. that you have learned. When you go up against a giant, mm. strategize this way. Think yeah. about this, think about that, think about, just give us a few tips mm. um, about, about going up against giants. Yeah, the first thing is never be too big. No matter how big you are or how well established you think, it's the big companies that are always nimble. They're always serving the customers on time. They're always listening to the customer, what they want, what they don't want. Um, they're the nimble guys, you know. So we've, we have we always think of ourselves as a startup, mm. um, no matter how many clients we've had. And over the years, we've had, you know, um, tens of thousands of clients, you know, in our database. So you have to always be nimble. You know, if the client comes and says they're not happy with something, act on that, you know, find out what, what is it that is working, what is it that is not working. Recreate yourself quick. Don't, don't be just caught up in something just because, um, you know, you've done it for, for years. If the, mm. if the customer says they don't want it's this not anymore, it's not working, you know, like they, they have at Amazon, they say they always have a, a table, a, I mean, a, a chair for the customer in their board meetings. You know, they, they really think of what is the customer wanting, 
what is it that we are doing? What is it that we are not doing that the customer wants? So we really, and you know, with our customers, they are really amazing. It's the students, it's the kids. Mm, mm. You know, they tell us, ah, no, and the kids nowadays, they talk a lot. Yeah, eh? yeah, they They'll do. tell you they that, do. ah, say, why are we doing this? You know, mm. why are we not doing this? You know, and obviously the parents also, they, they really reach out. I make sure that I'm also and uh, involved in every part of the business. Of course, now it's big. I can't be, uh, you know, in yeah. the day-to-day -day operations. But I really try to find out what are the people saying, what are the customers saying, can we, how can we keep ourselves small and nimble and agile, you know, mm. even though we have tens of thousands of students. Lovely. Mr. Khatola, let's now talk about the education system. Um, uh, there are just a few statistics that I wanted to read out uh, so that they also get some of what we're going to be talking about. In Botswana, we know that primary education is completely free. And um, as of 20, 2009, the government of Botswana spent almost 10% GDP on education, making it the fourth in the world. And in 2018, that number even went higher to 28% of Botswana's official budget. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of money being spent on education. And we also realized that 97% of all primary students will transition to secondary school, to JC. And then from JC to um, senior secondary school, there is that drop. Yeah. And then um, from, um, from, from senior secondary school to, to tertiary, there's even a bigger drop. Mm. So these are some of the issues that we're grappling with. The other issues that we're grappling with, we have overcrowded classrooms mm. and inadequate infrastructure. These are just some of the problems we are grappling with. Mm -hmm. In your space, what is your framework? What is your mindset in terms of solving some of these problems? Yeah, so I think um, the first thing is just to lay a disclaimer that, you know... Um, <laughs> very important. <laughs> very important. Yeah. You know, to say that the education system has flaws in it is not to say the government is not doing that part. Yes. It's not to say schools, as in private schools and public schools, are not doing that part. Mm. It's not to say tutoring companies like, like ourselves are not doing our part. Is this The problem is the system. You know, the system, hell of schooling. Um, there's an there's a image I saw on Facebook a um, couple of weeks back where they had a giraffe, a monkey, and a goldfish. And the, the education system was saying the test is to climb the tree. Yeah. <laughs> you get it? Yeah. So who's going to climb the tree? The monkey. It's obviously not the, the yeah. goldfish and the giraffe, you know, mm. but that's what the education system is. Um, it, it, it sort of standardizes what an ideal student should be, only looking at the certain capability. Mm -hmm. There are some students who are very brilliant with other things. We've seen even our athletics teams, you know, these guys yeah. are breaking world records. Yeah. But Botswana is actually up there in terms of sprinters. Exactly. Mm. So if you now want to put those guys in maths class, you know, what, what exactly are we doing here? There are some brilliant musicians. There's mm. the, the guy who, the sneaker I'm wearing now, you know, yeah. he's done this amazing sneaker and, you know, he's, he's really trying to build that and he has all the right networks, etc. you know. But that guy has no business learning Shaka Zulu history, you know, <laughs> or learning the grasshopper, you know, yeah. which is what we have as Tutokomuding currently. If you look at the Ministry of Basic Education, Tutokomuding, kids are taught the same thing, they're put under the same structure. You remember that, that diagram back in primary? Thorax and Thorax, you know. <laughs> we all, have, we all <laughs> had to do it, you know, yeah, but yeah. That, that could have been good if we were all going to be vets, or if we're all going to be a dinga mm. one. Yes. But for some of us who are entrepreneurs, for some of uh, us who are in, like yourself, you know, who's doing this ama amazing podcast and you have this amazing YouTube growing, you know, you had no business at Standard 3 being told that you failed to mark the thorax and the abdomen. And sometimes it can even scar you for life, you know. So that is basically mm. how the education system so is. So that's the problem. So... Our, our, our issue is we're not bringing, we're not discovering what the child is talented or good at yeah. from grassroots. From grassroots. And then we take it from there. Yes. And it's very complex. But mm. other countries like China, like Singapore, I mean, if we can't do it, then our population is, you know, two. our, our and that is two million. 
Kohai, you know, hey. but the schooling population is way less than that, mm. you know. But countries with 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 the billions or countries with you know uh, you know the millions of of people, um, they are able to understand that kind of education system which comes from grassroots level. We are not teaching our kids values. I saw uh, another TikTok where. These Chinese kids were taught values. They were sitting, in, they were standing in the bus, or they were sitting in the bus rather. And some, one of the kids came and gave them a holo. Then the other boy stood up and gave mm -hmm. them the chair. You know, that's part of the curriculum. Mm. You know, this culture. Culture, we haven't packaged it. Mm. And you know, right now, yes, there's the drive on the mindset change. There's a drive on knowledge skill, uh, knowledge based economy. Um, but we need to, you know, take that home. You know, we need to teach our kids. I have a daughter who's small, and I'm trying to teach her boto just as well. Hagi monela se mo wa hatare la, you know, mm. those kind of things. We need to really document them, and we need to put them in the education system. Mm. Right now, we are importing the education system, koma kweng the way it is, and they are the ones who are envious of the way that erdira se se tosaro na boto ba rona but how ca why can't we package that and put it into the education system lovely lovely and you were part of your caught up by the president uh, congrats on that oh, you're caught okay. up by the president <laughs> for the for the reset um agenda the mindset change yeah. talk to me about that what are some of those things that you guys are that are that you're working on yeah it was such an amazing also platform contributions on your end yeah yeah no it was it was actually one of the committee which was on education the mindset change and it was it was really nice mm. um we were able to you know bounce ideas with other different stakeholders but one thing i always grapple with implementation you know we have all of this these good things and ideas and yeah. in the you know they will read the report and it's on the report but now to say let us change and and changing like it is difficult you know but how do we do it though like I understand the concept. It's great. Mm. But just like business, you know, the idea is just your foot in the door. Mm. Execution is the game. Mm. How do we do it? Sometimes it's about pulling the plug. And <laughs> then, you know, that's what a lot of Botswana we, we, we struggle with. We are uh, people by language. We struggle with just pulling the plug. You know, just pull the plug. Right now, you know, we, took a, we, we talked about value chain development in the education space. Okay. And the value chain comes from, we are importing the syllabus. Uh, for instance, we have the, so for, for just for a bit of context, when you start your, your early childhood, I get a Simon Lai Lohorwa, Kukwala PSE, Lika Standard 7, and now there's Cambridge Checkpoint, they learn what they have go in the private schools, and there's the IB curriculum that they do in certain schools, the PYP. We are importing that curriculum, mm. and there's a whole value chain. It means now we have to also at tertiary level, teach people to teach uh, that curriculum, um, textbooks, you it's know, we, we we take that textbooks and you'll find even with these Cambridge textbooks or IB textbooks, every three years, there's a new edition. Yeah. So you have to, they recall those other ones that, you know, they, they are sitting in the bookstores, they take them out, they, they bring the new ones. And who are the authors that we are putting pockets in? Where, where are we exporting the jobs to? The people who are writing, who are publishing those books, mm. we are importing them from abroad. So the, the same way as Rukhana, we miss the restriction on, on tomatoes and toothpicks. Mm. We can stop the borders and say, let's relook at this whole education space. You know, mm. Let's stop importing this curriculum. We can derive a few things from it. I mean, think of history. We're learning history. Right now, if I can ask uh, our studio audience here, uh, Shaka Zulu, Le Bengula, Dingane, they know all of those. I mean, there's even a show on DSTV about Shaka Ilembe. Yeah, yeah. But if I can ask you who our Tswana warriors, Mobo mm. how, why is it that the Kwening people are where they are, Bakhata, history, Bakhata, um, and we have a rich culture. Mm. If I can ask you about the 3 d Khosi, how did they take our independence. None of us, we're just going to say, no, they took our independence. Yeah, How, yeah. what are the conversations? We can have a series that can run on Netflix, but, you know, we are not doing that because we are consuming the curriculum from abroad and we are consuming history from abroad. But I, this, is, this is also a consensus that I don't think you're the only one who has. Many of us have. Mm. Uh, is it because we're trying to standardize 
or maybe meet some kind of an international standard or what? Because obviously the problem exists that we are taking this it's just copy and paste mm. and it's not serving us to the degree we need. it needs to serve us. Mm. Wabon. I hear you. You remember when we started the interview, you asked me what makes me stick out when I'm expanding to South Africa mm. and we, we currently just have some students in Italy and Spain. Nice. Yes. Um, so what helps Lion to turn and stand out is our originality. Rebatswana. Mm. You mm. know, and we are not apologetic. You know, when we go there, we introduce ourselves that we are, it's, it's a company that is run by Botswana. Of course, we are going to be in, uh, employing people in their countries. They understand the kids better. Mm. They understand their curriculum better. But, you know, back to your point, you know, our originality mm. is what is going to make us unique. Mm. Uh, we don't have to standardize and say, people from other nations or from other countries. Mm. We need to embrace our difference mm. and make it work for us. Yeah. I love I love what's going on also, Mobutsuana, the whole embrace. But I think we're still a bit far mm. from embracing our own culture and our originality. Because mm. the product is UK, South Africa, mm. Botswana, yeah. are buying in this direction. Yeah. <laughs> Most A lot of people, just generally. Yeah. Where have we lacked that? Um, that that you know yeah, that it's, pride. It's self hate. It, it, we have we have a and lot of self hate mm. amongst us. I mean, even now I'm wearing BK Procter. You know, I'm, I'm yeah. so I'm so proud of. I, I, I personally I'm so proud of Botswana. You know the things that we're doing. Mm. I, I believe we are we are the best nation. Because you know I'm saying that. I remember there was a session we had here. There was a gentleman that came and said I he was running a company. I don't want to just name whatever company he was doing. And he said that he was doing well until they found out. Hore, came from our boards. Well, mm. boards. And mm. then somehow he started things getting change. sabotage and whatever. Yeah. So why do we experience these things amongst ourselves? No, it's a culture. Oh, only two million. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I don't know how, how whoever succeeded to implant this mm. dogma. Mm. We, we can't do that. But mm. granted, it's not all of us. Mm. There's a lot of Botswana that are proud, that, that mm. have pride about yeah. Botswana, that love Botswana. Mm. But there's also this demographic also that's a bit, mm. you know. Mm. Yeah, well, it's, it, we, we need to do it, man. Uh, yeah. This is a different generation. Mm. Uh, it's, not, it's not our parents' generation or the previous generation. This is the new generation. If it's a revolution you want me to lead, my brother, mm. Mm. <laughs> I can lead the revolution, yeah. you know. Yeah. And there are many young Botswana out there that are full of this you know, passion that I have to say, we can do it. We, we can do it together. We mm. can all win. Yeah. We don't have to now step on top of Mpo's head and Palesa's head for me to get up. You know, we can all, we can all go up. All and it starts us. by loving ourselves, mm. you know, uh, you know, uh, eating our, consuming our culture, mm. starting Ella from the produce, starting from the content, we, we know of many scandals that have been taking place of, you know, us importing people from the neighboring country yeah, and yeah, they yeah, disappoint yeah. artists, et cetera, et cetera. Sure. You know, if you listen to my iTunes now, you'll see that there's a lot of local music, you know, local music. Sometimes I listen to it and I'm like, this is even better than yeah, what we yeah, are consuming yeah. from, from the neighboring countries, you yeah. know. So I think it just does by, you know, us and ourselves say, you know what, this is where we draw the line. This generation, mm. you know, our generation, this is where we draw the line. But I like what's going on also, as you're saying, like this generation, because we're starting to see it really happen um, and, and the whole support. Yeah. It's starting to be seen. Mm. You know, we, I don't know how it's been before then, but yeah. we're starting to see, really see that support and that structure yeah. like that. So coming back to the education system, um, some of the things that we... A decrying way a serious move to go the decline is the 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 decline in passing mm. is going lower and lower and lower. Yeah. I remember the last year about forty six thousand or so from trees wrote mm. and like close to thirty one thousand of them mm. had D and below. Yeah. Which is a scary statistic. Mm. You know. So I think there's there has to be some kind of way. As you are saying, it's the system. The system might be failing us, but mm. what else is, is some of these are some of the problems that we need to look at, shine some light on, and be able to develop solutions for. Mm. The the the, the answer to that is personalized learning. Mm. 
Mm. Uh, we don't have a lot of personalized learning because we believe in one size fits all because we don't want to spend in having the right teachers. You know, you'll have a classroom of one teacher, 40 students, yeah. one teacher, 50 students. And you'll find that the reason why these kids are failing is because there's no uh, personalized education, you know, personalized learning. If you look at some of the schools we've worked with, I'll just mention their names. Uh, they are fine with that. Uh, Philip Noshotla and Mokoditana Primary. These are schools that um, either um, the government or the private sector had sponsored us to go into these schools mm -hmm. and tutor the students. And we broke that ratio into one is to, we even went as, as low as one is to five, one mm -hmm. is to four. And those grades went up. Mm -hmm. You know, those students started to perform. Mm -hmm. You know, we streamlined the, 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 the classes. Maybe say you have five classes, uh, 120 students, we streamlined, you know, take the top ones, take them, and then allocate human capital, which is for that group of students. So you find the way that you teach a C student trying to get a B, and the way you teach an A student trying to get an A+, plus, there's a different approach. Mm. So those are some of the, 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 the unwritten rules mm. that we are implementing. You know, personalized learning mm. can, can take this country far. But we can't afford it because we are not willing to put the money into it you know we are putting money into other things mm. we are putting mm. money into mm. textbooks we are putting money into cars uh, written this or that you know yeah. going around town but we are not putting money in the human capital for for to, to produce those results yeah and this is the workforce of the future yeah. these are the people that are handling the future absolutely um talk to me about this because i see what the government has also done trying to bring digital literacy also to students mm. at a at a large scale mm. with laptops and all that. And pe many people have been saying, Hore, you know, we only started this now. No. But if you actually see, read the statistics, the government of Botswana has been in this space for some time. Mm. The statistics, there's, there's a statistic that says that it's, it, as early as 1990, vocational training um, schools were, were, were doing ICT. Mm. They were teaching ICT. They were doing mm. all these things. So it's a little bit of Maybe <coughs> or maybe sometimes there, there was a bit of ineffectiveness but mm. so talk to yeah. me about that um the digital space and education yeah and that linkage the first thing i'm going to talk about is job redundancy i know you might think it has nothing to say to do with what you've asked me <laughs> but it does yeah, yeah. it has a lot because yeah. right now the jobs that we're training for mm. they are being taken away not by robots by systems mm. you get what i'm saying for instance um, if let's say you are working at a bank as a as a as a loan, uh, you know you are looking at people's loans, you are assessing their loans. Right now, there's a there's a system that is more accurate in yeah. assessing that loan than a person. Mm. So if your department was twenty people doing that, it might get cut down to five. Mm. Those are some of the confidential information you won't really hear, mm. and you think why is the the unemployment high because we are training for jobs which are being redundant. Now, mm. if you are going to say fourth industrial revolution, you give students laptops, that in itself is not enough. Students need to be studying robotics. Mm. They need to be learning how to communicate mm. with the back end of that computer. Because if you bring that computer and it already has a program running on it, guess who programmed that robot? A Chinese student. And you'll find it's a student our age, mm. you are sitting at, maybe you are in form five and you are given this laptop and it has a program running on it. Mm. Where is the money? The money is the student who's in China mm. that programmed that laptop mm. and who is your age? You get it? Yeah. The, 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 the money is, is, is not where we are going. So we're not succeeding in our context. Unfortunately, unfor I don't want to be the, the bearer of bad news, yeah. but, you know, the efforts are good. You know, it's coming out of a good heart, uh, yeah. but that, that is where you need to consult mm. with, uh, and, and not even just myself, mm. occupational therapists, people that know that, um, or, or, or people that under industrial um, engineers, people that know where the industries, the trends are going. If mm. your job is going to be still here, or if we are training people for only five years, mm. then we we wonder why by 2040, you know, there's a high unemployment rate because we are also even exporting the jobs because the person who's going to program that iPhone is, is sitting elsewhere. Yeah. But we have people that can be able to, to do that, to uh, do that. Uh, here. Oof. 
And also I was watching an interview with Strive uh, Masiwa and he was talking about the AI and just the power of AI. Yeah. And he likened it to the Industrial Revolution, yeah. which was yeah. massive yeah. because I believe a lot of things are going to build on on it in and yeah. of itself. So cloud computing is coming in, yeah. 3D printing is coming in, yeah. all these things are coming in. Yeah. Talk to me about how you are thinking about incorporating that also into education in your space. Yeah, the I mean, the biggest thing is to encourage students to take these kind of curriculum, whatever it is that you're doing. You know, let me give you an example. When I was studying at the University of Pretoria, um, I, I was doing a first year actuarial science before I performed badly and had to move to another course. Mm. And one of the courses was programming. Mm. And actuarial science is to do with banking yeah. and finance and insurance and risk and compliance, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. But we always had a module on programming and the hardcore mm. computer science, C++, Java, mm. C Sharp, you know, because they were teaching us that we need to be able to program the systems that we are going to be using. You understand? So if, if you go to, I've seen other actuarial science institutions where the students are just given the system as it is. Mm. And they try to, those are the ones that the jobs are going to be taken from them. But the one who can the actually creators. create the the risk um, uh, or the or the the system that is actually being used to run the the disbursements of loans to 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 assess the risk, etc. To do the credit score checking, to do the risk checking. I guess that's what the the insurance companies do. The one who's going to program that. So we need to even teach our children that. Even if you are going to pursue a degree in media, there has to be a smaller yana component of how do you position yourself mm. to work with the systems and the robots and the AI, etc. Every single career, we need to be teaching the kids to say, how do you have a smaller yana course in, in robotics? We failed that with entrepreneurship. Mm. We should have long done that 20 years back, mm. incorporate entrepreneurship in the schooling system. Mm. Such that even if your child is studying agriculture, they want to be a farmer, they have a little bit of business background. If they want to be a musician, like we have a lot of talent in this country, some of our musicians are failing because they don't understand business. Yeah, They are mishandling their finances, etc. You And we always see them in the social media. Or, mm. Those kind of things because they don't know how to handle the finances. The, day, the guys or the ladies are doing very well in terms of bringing in the money in the shows and the everything, but they're not able to handle the, or at least just the basic. Hmm. Yeah, man. <laughs> and you also reminded me of a scary statistic I read. Um, it said that um, out of 80% of the courses we are doing in varsity right now, the moment, when you started, the moment you end, it's already obsolete. Yes, sir. Already... And that is, uh, I actually... Re there was a recommendation from the World Economic Forum. There was mm -hmm. an IOL publication. Mm -hmm. um, okay, obviously it was for South Africa. They looked at the job redundancy index. Mm. Uh, unfortunately, Momo Joana, it hasn't... <laughs> no, I don't know why anyone is not doing it. Maybe I should do it. But yeah. they said that South Africa, especially after COVID, mm -hmm. they assessed the job redundancy. Not even by the time you finish the course. Even before you are admitted for the course. Huh. It's, 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 it's already over. it's already redundant. Yeah, this is a publication, the IOL publication. They did that uh, study and it was a recommendation from the World Economic Forum. <laughs> Shocking, yeah? <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> it's quite, it's quite, it's quite, yeah, the world is actually changing in ways that it's moving so fast that, you know, it's almost like, I, I remember, I think this was Dumisani Lenga Mangali Nube, he was saying that you have to, to shoot where, this where 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 Kuri was given an example of the earth rotating and then the moon is rotating also. Mm -hmm. Then he said that um if you go to the moon, you don't go where it is. Yeah. You go where it will be. Yeah. So that by the time it gets there, you are there. Oh. So I think that's really how we should very be well thinking said, about brother. education and even yeah. moving forward. Yeah, very well ah. said. But my last question for you, um, how do you want to be remembered as Tobo? Ah. Okay, man. <laughs> you want me to write by? <laughs> yeah, well, I just want to be remembered as yeah. a change maker, you know. My my purpose is just to make a difference. 
um, and to make to leave people the a better way than I found them. That is basically who I am in terms of our employees, in terms of our clients, our students. My aim is just to make their lives better. That's that's basically what I mm. what I am. Thank you guys for watching this episode. We really hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Deep Dive is dedicated to bringing you the most comprehensive and engaging information about business, personal finance, and personal development. Make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay updated with all our latest content. If you like this video, give it a like to show your support and help us reach a wider audience. And don't forget to share this video with your friends and your family who may be interested. Sharing helps us grow our community and connect with like-minded individuals. Leave a comment below and give us your biggest take away on this episode if you're interested in being a part of our live studio audiences make sure to register for the next show can make it to the show no problem check out our patreon page to watch the full episode and get exclusive access to more great content thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next episode of the deep dive